This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us. We've got John Cameron in the middle and Richard Field down on the other end. Here in California, our uh, most senior assembly member was elected Speaker of the House yet again, but by a, a decreasing margin. Uh, what's your opinion on that, Richard? Well, it's interesting. Uh, she was able to uh, be elected Speaker with the support of uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the rest of the squad, or at least members of the squad, in spite of the, the squad making loud noises about how she wasn't progressive enough and they were going to vote against her, et cetera. When, it comes, when push comes to shove and committee assignments and uh, so forth are uh, hanging in the balance, they all fall in line and they all support the power. And that's exactly what's happening. It's interesting the way the whole thing is shake, shaking out in, in Congress. Justin Amash was uh, one of his biggest complaints about Congress is the fact that it's not a democratic institution anymore. Everything, all of the power resides in the speaker's uh, chair. None of the power uh, resides within the individual congressman. They pretty much have to fall in line and vote the party line if they're going to have any relevance in uh, actually accomplishing anything. And then they only accomplish what the speaker wants them to accomplish the power is all in the in the in the speaker's position and she's got the power and it's no surprise that with a biden administration coming in you have a guy that's been uh, playing in the corridors of power for what 40 years or something and with uh, pelosi who's been there at least as long uh, that power is all that matters keeping power maintaining power and using that power to continue to retain power and not much else. I had a question, and I should know this from my civics class years ago, but it's been so long I forgot. So when when Biden uh, is medically uh, transitioned out, what's her name is impeached for all of her you know previous crimes catching up to her, who who then becomes president? The Speaker of the House. Ah, okay. So so now the plot thins. Well, I, I, you know, as much as I would hope that uh, Kamala Harris would be impeached for her uh, many uh, uh, ethical lapses, let, let us say, well, I don't no, think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. They're not ethical lapses, and I agree with you. It's, it probably won't happen, but uh, they're, they're not ethical lapses. There are things that if you or I did them, we would have gone to prison. They are actual crimes. Withholding exculpatory evidence in a capital crime is a crime. It's a crime that should be punishable by her being in jail. But anyway, well, on to the next story. This reminds me of the Star Trek episode where there was two aliens on and they despised each other. And Kirk said, well, well, why do you despise each other? You're exactly the same. And one alien said, no, my, I'm, they were half, they were half of their face was black and half of their face was white. So I'm, I'm black on the left and white on the right. And he's black on the Opposite right. Side. Yeah, the opposite thing. And we're completely different. And I'm thinking, you know, the difference between the, the Republicans and the Blamocrats is any more, I mean, other than people, Amash and, and a few outstanding notable exceptions, they're the same. It's power, it's spending, it's more government, it's bigger government, it's... It's remaining fear, in power. When it comes it's, down to it. it's remaining yeah. in power. Yeah. yeah, well, I've got a couple... If, from this perspective of if you don't get anything done, if you if you only play with the powers that be. But the problem is, if you're only accomplishing what the powers that be want, you're not getting anything done anyway. So it's mm -hmm. kind of it's a weak argument for me that this notion that if you don't play along, you don't get anything done because you're not getting anything done by playing along. No, if they, I'm sorry, James. I and so you. it's just it, to me, it seems kind of strange. And this notion that Camilla Harris being prosecuted, it's not going to happen. They don't prosecute agents of the government. It doesn't happen. We'll move on to our next story. The NSA surveillance exposed by Snowden was ruled unlawful and unconstitutional, but yet Snowden's the only one being prosecuted. We have hundreds, if not thousands of people in the government who have been operating an illegal and unconstitutional program, and yet the only person being prosecuted is the guy who exposed it. And add to that, not only are they operating illegal an unconstitutional surveillance on citizens of the United States, but in, in order to be allowed, quote unquote, allowed to do this, they actually lied repeatedly about what they were doing to receive permission to do something else. It's on and on and on. And, and I absolutely agree with you. I think uh, Assange and Snowden, well, Assange isn't going to be extradited because he's too ill. 
according to a UK judge. And I think Snowden should get whatever the highest medal. The the uh, is he is he a former uh, he's a former military guy, right? Isn't he? He I'm not sure if he was military, but he was he worked a contractor, in contractor. In, in, military I, I, in, I uh, intelligence was, contractor. I, I think he I worked. Thought he was, for, I thought he was a veteran. I'll have to look that up later. Because if he's a veteran, you could call him back to active duty and give him the Medal of Honor. But since he's not, uh, I don't know. So it, I agree with you. I absolutely. don't think you have to be a, ve a veteran to be to get the Medal of Honor. I'm not sure. Well, you no, know, you, you have to be actually. Medal of, you can get some medal. Rush yeah, Limbaugh got a medal. medal but so. yeah, but they're they're like made up medals. You know, like the, the Nobel Medal Prize of Freedom or something. It, no, it no. doesn't. Yeah, the symbolism is actually in that case more important than the actual medal itself. Mm -hmm. The fact that he should be rewarded instead of punished for exposing a yeah. massive government program that's a violation of all our constitutional rights. Don't, but yet, don't he's the only one being prosecuted. Don't we have? Yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. Uh, you know, I didn't realize that no, that the judge's rationale on uh, not extraditing uh, Assange was his uh, poor health. Uh, that's that's disappointing. I would have hoped that the uh, judge would have said there's nothing to extradite him on other than practicing freedom of the press. Mm. And I, I, that's the headline I read, and I read it on one of the lamestream press websites, so it could be wrong. There, there are laws to protect whistleblowers in private industry. Why aren't there laws to protect uh, whistleblowers in public service? And I think there are. There are. Laws. There are, but they're, but they're ignored. Yeah. Yeah, well, the government gets to decide what's protecting a whistleblower and who's yeah. a whistleblower. <laughs> when the villain gets to gets to make the decisions, well, you know, they, it's going to go in their, their favor. When when, uh, when Hillary was, you know, guilty of of operating a private server that had uh, intelligence data on it, not that we should be involved in having agents in foreign countries that are doing nefarious acts, that server would have was if you or I would have had official secrets on a private email thing, we would have gone to prison. Why didn't she go? But anyway, on and on and on, which is why we need, need to get rid of qualified immunity and why we need to hold uh, people in public office to even higher standard than you or I, private citizens. And the result of that would be that no one would be in public office or very few people, and we'd all be better off. Well, the people who would be in public office would not be people who are there simply for the power and uh, ego gratification. There would yeah. be people who actually went to Congress for a term or two to uh, repeal laws, which is really what needs to be done, yeah. so that they can go back home uh, and live in a freer uh, society. Well, I think, you know, despite all the horrors and everything, that, that people, more and more and more people are getting absolutely fed up with the inconsistent, and I think we have another topic coming up that we'll talk about that, so I'll hold it until then. All right, so talking about people getting fed up. The United States was essentially alone in the world in keeping our schools closed. And we're the only country that I know of that now still has our schools closed. And so as a result, there's uh, lots of people are looking outside of public education. And they've now noticed that, you know, public schools may not be the best way to educate their kids. And so imagine that. Yeah. You know, it's interesting in the private sector, a monopoly almost always fails eventually. Uh, you've got Kodak, you've got uh, IBM, you've got... Uh, well, it hasn't failed yet, but it's but it's not nearly the BMF that it was. Microsoft, as far as its uh, uh, web browser, most companies that have a monopoly end up failing because they become dismissive of their customers and take them for granted. Uh, unfortunately, the one you know the monopolies that are public monopolies have a much harder time being uh, overturned. I mean, I'm thinking of the the post office and obviously the public education system. Uh, the public education system is a system where you are required by law to attend. Uh, you have to attend a school of some kind. It doesn't have to be a public uh, school, although the public school unions would like to make it so. Uh, you have to, you're, you're a captive customer, you have to attend, and you have to attend in the geography where you live and so forth and so on. It's very, very difficult. The only way, that, the only escape that people have that the parents and students have is to go to private schools while paying the cost of both private schools and the public schools who, that they're no longer attending. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, doubling up or tripling up on education costs because uh, private schools do the same job or better for a lot less cost than the public schools do. But as has been pointed out, the uh, the, the recent pandemic or panic demit, as John likes to call it, pandemic closed, dude, panic closed, closed the schools. And uh, so people are getting, hey, what's going on here? We are not getting anything. The schools are closed other than sporadic and uh, ineffectual online learning. 
we can do that a lot cheaper and a lot more effectively with private institutions, whether it's charter schools or whether it's uh, private schools or whatever. Maybe the uh, teachers union has gone a step too far in demanding that they continue to get paid for doing nothing. Well, they've been getting paid for doing nothing for uh, forever. No and and, no and I, I would pull out my, my favorite uh, Patterson quote here, but I'd have to find my phone to do it. And it's when you think about it, you're forced to pay taxes. And I wish we wouldn't call them public schools. Let's call them government schools because they're not public schools. They, they're, they're not for the public good. They're for the good of the government. The only thing they teach when they're, they're forced to, they'll teach a little math and science, but the history is all about government. Who cares about government? Governments don't don't improve things. Government just breaks things. Uh, and then they do even more breakage to fix the breakage they already did. The, the teachers unions have all this money and all of this power, and it's paid for out of the pockets of the people that agree or disagree with what they're doing. And as Richard quite correctly pointed out, you can't stop paying taxes for the school. You can only choose to double up. And what many people are doing is doubling up. And something between, uh, depending on the state, and, and I think it's in Ohio, if you, there you go down a list, you will find the percentage of public school teachers that, are, that have their kids in private schools. And the average in this country is, I think, over 38%. And in some states, it's approaching 60%. So... Even the government school teachers know that they're providing a crap product. If it wasn't patently illegal and immoral, you could solve it all very quickly by just forcing uh, the parents who are or government school teachers to have their kids go to the same freaking school that they teach in or else they don't have a job. And then you would see, despite the teachers union, an improvement in the quality of education given, but we know that that's immoral and illegal. Well, I'm not sure. There are there are uh, municipalities that require uh, people that work for the municipality to live in the municipality. In other mm -hmm. words, if you're working for the city of blank, you have to live in the city of blank. You can't be mm -hmm. uh, commuting from a, from another city. That's that's uh, uh, the the rule in some. Uh, cities and towns. Now, trying to get that something like that uh, enacted across the country would be a, a Herculean task because, of course, you'd be fighting the teachers union in order to do it. And they have but, all the uh, money. But it's not yeah. impossible. Yeah. No. So let's let's look at the there. We yeah we know some public interest law firms that you know might take a case on like that. But uh, anyway, I, there are, and there are poli there are, you know there are poli there are political donors in the state of California who a few years ago and some big donors who uh, made a decision that they would support Democratic candidates because they knew supporting Republican candidates in the areas that were gerrymandered uh, or were libertarian commanders was, was a lost cause, but they would only support Democratic candidates or any candidate who would agree to fight the teachers union. And um, so, you know, I think maybe the worm is turning and, uh, and uh, the worm is turning. Yeah. Well, education is so individualized, but yet we've got a system of one size fits none. Or as like John likes to say, or as like I heard uh, yesterday on an old TV show I was watching, is what manufacturers like to say, one size fits us. So the, yeah. yeah, the one size, John says one size fits us, but one size fits the system. It doesn't fit the children, it fits mm -hmm. the system. And I think now we're getting to the point where the rest of the world caters to us as individuals except for our education systems and all the systems where government is actually highly involved. Mm -hmm. And why are we accepting that? And I think that's the change. If there is a change, it's a change of expectations. We mm -hmm. no longer are going to ex expect our schools to operate in this simplistic fashion, this hundred years ago. They're still operate the same way they did a hundred years ago. It's absurd. Mm -hmm. it's... So after a summer of justifying political violence, Portland, Oregon mayor, finally condemned Antifa and, Arne and, and anarchists. Anarchists, we'll get to anarchists. Where's my king? Anarchists. <laughs> Following a night of riots in New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Anarch where am I? Anarchists, yeah. <laughs> so now, all of a sudden, Antifa is real. Antifa is this violent group of people that need to be dealt with and you need to have bring down the law enforcement on them. After what, 
six months of allowing them to ruin the city. Yeah, almost nightly rioting, looting, burning, and all the rest of that. Well, the reason he's coming out against them now is because you don't want to have any of this bad stuff on the news with a Democratic president in office because, you know, that's going to ruin the propaganda rules. I mean, you know, you, you can't have bad stuff going on while the good guys are in office. You know, all of these... All of this violence and everything was completely justified while uh, the, the Twitter man was in, was in office. But now the good guys are going to be in office. So we got to have the stuff stopped, man. You got to stop. You're going to rock the boat. Yeah. My opinion. Anyway, what the hell? Yeah, well, the timing is strange. What do you think, Richard? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, the, 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 it's post election, uh, pre election. Uh, as far as the timing is concerned, but the, uh, the mayor of Portland has never been uh, a uh, has never been uh, uh, favorably looked upon by the leftist elements in Portland. In any case, I mean, even even before he started cracking down, uh, he was uh, there. There were protests in front of his house, and he was he was a, well, he considered one of the bad guys by the radical French. Uh, I think th that you have to understand that the the protests of the summer. Uh, were uh, along two lines. One line of protest were people who were righteously, and I mean rightfully, indignant about the uh, uh, police killings of blacks uh, across the country. And the other uh, line of protesters were people who were saying, hey, an opportunity to raise holy hell and cr create, uh, you know, destroy uh, society so that we can uh, take over uh, in the uh, in the ashes uh, in the aftermath, uh, and the ones that are making the most noise in Portland, uh, come, you know, protesting after the Democrats won are ob obviously uh, in the latter camp. They're more interested in taking over everything and, uh, and you know, bringing on a, a full uh, a full uh, uh, communist regime or uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, as opposed to a left liberal, which is what uh, what Biden uh, represents. Yeah, well, there's clearly a difference. There was always a difference between Antifa and everybody else, regardless of, of what it was. Antifa was always a vastly different thing. But how many times you have to heard, well, they've got anti-fascists in their name, so they have to be okay. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> oh, that's what it means. I was even trying if, to figure out what it meant. It's even if, just because, I thought they I mean, were anti-gay. I don't you, yeah, I don't get it. You can put anti in anything. You can call yourself whatever you want. It doesn't mean anything. It's your actions speak louder than words. But to me, it kind of, without wanting to exaggerate, it brings back shadows of back in Germany when the brown shirts, when, after the Nazis got into power, they were done with the brown shirts, the Knight of Knives. Now you guys are, you were useful to us then, and now you're not. So goodbye. And now you, you know, kick to the curb. I think if you want to, well, yeah, and and, and the whole confusion about uh, fascist versus uh, communist is uh, is a big part of the political philosophy problem in this country. Fascists and communists are essentially the same. The only difference is under a fascist regime, regime the uh, the government controls everything, but pro property is is nominally owned by large corporations. Uh, in the communist system, uh, the government run, runs everything and actually owns those corporations as well. As, uh, as as runs them. So uh, as far as the, the the person on the street, you you know you're dealing against you're dealing with uh, a uh, a fascist monopoly or or a communist monopoly. Big deal, no difference. Well, and then it really is no difference because it ends up being the same people running them, whether yeah. it's the whether it's communist or fascist. So it really yeah, and Mussolini, and Mussolini was you know Mussolini, so-called fascist, was a socialist in his youth. Mm -hmm. uh, Hitler uh, was a, a national socialist. Mm. Uh, they understood that it's all rhetoric and that uh, yeah. the 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 only the only objective was total control, mm. uh, and, and you know it's very similar to the politicians today. With it's a little bit more watered down, but the only uh, objective of Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden and Donald Trump and uh, and uh, the rest is they're interested in gaining and retaining and uh, maintaining power forever. Yeah. yeah, and and that violence or not violence, the uh, graffiti, uh, shall we say, and keep intimidation and harassment actually hit Pelosi and McConnell's house. The apparently she tagged and slightly vandalized. You know, after the course of the summer, we'll call it slightly vandalized. Mm. Pelosi's and no, if you want to see real house. vandalism, go to Portland. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. now all this kind of stuff is wrong. Harassment 
and political vandalism. And it's wrong. You don't engage in it. But you know, what you reap, what you sow. At some point, don't you? Well, it's, it's, it's a violation of the. Uh, you know, it's 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 a a perfect example of the slogan: "The ends justify the means," which is a favorite of. Communists, they you know you have to you know in order to make an omelet you have to break some eggs and it's a favorite saying of, of Lenin, and uh, the you know the uh, uh, bam by any means necessary. There's actually an environmental group that goes by that name. Uh, when you say that you it is justifiable to do anything to achieve your ends, you have essentially broken down any pretense to civilized behavior. Can you kill somebody because you don't like their policy on? Oh, yeah. Medicare for all. Well, the the uh, the progressives would uh, probably, uh, uh, in their secret heart of hearts, say, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Oh, and and one thing, there is one. Again, I'm trying to look cynical, John. I'm, I'm still I'm trying to look for the good here, and and because uh, it is a new year, at least by the calendar that most people use. By my my pagan calendar, it was the 22nd of December, but by the calendar we all use, New Year. And, and there was, Richard pointed out that, that uh, Nazi Germany was national socialism and that it's all socialism or communism, but they just put the word national in front of it. And, and you guys remember that not that many months ago, it's probably been six months because the way time's going by now, that, that what is national socialism was starting to be floated in some of the popular press. The idea that what we really need is national socialism, national socialism. I saw it more and more and more in the lamestream press. And I, I, I'm hoping that we're not seeing it, not because it's gone underground and it's now going to be public policy going forward, but that people realize that, that the citizenry, despite the effects, of, despite the attempts to dumb down the populace in the government school systems, isn't stupid enough to not make the connection between national socialism in Nazi Germany and national socialism here. So I'm, I'm glad to see that I haven't seen that phrase in the lamestream press in a while. And I'm done with that. Well, it'll bring us on our last thing, actually. It's a nice, COVID-19 was going to be bad no matter what, but yet the government failures have made it much, much worse. And if people see that, maybe that is actually the Massive failure of the command and control of COVID. And I think know, yeah. that, that socialism has failed. And, and, and I think people are seeing it because when I talk to people, even their people, I haven't talked to my, some people very close to me about it because they, they get a little emotional. Um, but even people in who are of a, a leftward or rightward bias, a very strong either, you know, blame a crowd or, or, or Republican bias, uh, uh, look at the rules that were imposed so capriciously. And, and they're asking questions like, why is Walmart open and the grocery store open, but I can't go sit outside my coffee house, which is outside and have a cup of coffee or sit outside and have a meal or none of the rules make scientific sense. They're simply imposed, as Richard's pointing out, by who has the power on down. And these little small businesses, and I think it's just coincidence, I'm sure, that most small businesses are either owned by right-leaning or libertarian-leaning people, people who, who, who uh, are, are hardcore capitalists are seldom socialists, people who are willing to risk, risk their own capital uh, and start up a business. These are the ones who are being most affected by it. And the larger organizations that can make huge political contributions and pull some weight are being either left alone or left pretty much alone. And people are starting to see this and realize that there is no logic in what the government's trying to do. And they looked at the failures by the mixed messages by CDC the, the fact that the FDA wouldn't let people use testing kits that worked at the beginning. They said, no, you can't use them. Uh, you have to use our kit. And it turned out that their testing kit uh, for antibodies or for COVID didn't work. And they had to actually go back to the private sector and buy stuff. They look at state of California spending hundreds of millions of dollars on medical equipment and, and basically getting taken by some non-existent company or buying ventilators or not going to use and on and on. I should probably take a breath here. On and on and on. 
Uh, so people are seeing, no matter if they are left, right, or right in, in their thinking, as are libertarians, I would say right in their thinking, um, people are seeing that, that governments make bad decisions, the decisions don't make sense, and the decisions only come from serving those who have power. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say it's you know taken a couple hundred thousand people dying, you know, if we really ever see the real numbers, how many of those people have actually, you know, died of the, the effects of COVID or they just have weakened immune systems and they would die to something else anyway. I don't think we're ever going to see those numbers. So the fact that, 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 that the government agencies that we put our trust in flip-flopped and lied and, and failed over and over again, I think might lead people to make decisions to not trust those people and to vote for people in the future who are going to take power out of those organizations. That's the optimistic view. The pessimistic view, of course, is that people have become accustomed for ever, ever really ever since the New Deal to asking, what can government do for me? And mm -hmm. ignoring the cost and ignoring where the benefit uh, originates. Uh, so, you know, I, I listen to C-SPAN Washington Journal in the morning because it's the only uh, media where the call-in or media call-in show where the, the calls are not screened. So you get a good cross-section of what people are actually thinking. And I, I'm hearing way too many people saying, how come uh, we don't get our $2,000? How come, uh, uh, you know, the government isn't doing this, that, and the other thing for me? Where's my free Medicare? Where's uh, my Medicare for all? Where's... Uh, you know, what are you going to do to protect Social Security? What are you going to do for me? As opposed to recognizing that free Medicare costs something and it costs something by the people who actually put money into government through taxation. They don't realize that uh, a free $2,000 or $600 or whatever it is has to come from somewhere, either from taxpayers or from the magic money printing machine, which will do nothing but cause inflation. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have we have a you know a cycle of awareness uh, on uh, these kinds of things, and I think the cycle of awareness now is people willing to believe or hoping to you know wanting to believe that government can fix everything, provide security at no cost to them. Uh, you know, you, you know the world does owe me a living, and until that, until that mindset uh, is reversed, which can only happen probably in the ultimate. Uh, and through uh, through really bad times, uh, a breakdown of the economy entirely. When, when like Adler shrugged, the uh, the producers stopped producing and said, "To hell with it. We're not we're not going to you know we're not going to play this game anymore." Until that happens, you have a you have a system that's uh, on a downhill uh, treadmill with uh, with no hope in sight and no blame uh, assigned properly. Well, with. With that depressing note, we are out of time. And from my from my perspective, from my perspective, we're watching Animal Farm play out in real time, in real life. For all of you who are watching, thanks for watching. You can catch us at libertariancounterpoint.com. Thanks to Access Sacramento. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, please remember to love everybody and the world to get a little bit better. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you guys have a fan. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.